treatment. Because laryngeal mucosa is much more easily injured with acid, pepsin than esophageal mucosa, the treatment for GERD and LPR are different. Although the esophagus can tolerate exposure of up to 50 episodes of reflux a day without injury, as few as 3 isolated episodes of laryngeal acid, pepsin exposure per week have been shown to induce injury in experimental models.1, 28 Owing to these differences in defense mechanisms, intermittent treatment of GERD is often successful, although more chronic therapy is necessary for LPR. Although H2 receptor antagonists were once considered optimal medical therapy, they only inhibit one of several pathways involved in gastric acid production. In the 1980s, PPIs were introduced in the United States as drugs that target the endpoint of gastric acid production, the H+, K+, adenosine triphosphatase, AT -PASA, pump. Although PPIs have been shown to be highly effective, Daily PPI therapy has been shown to last for less than 14 hours if given in the morning. Furthermore, an evening dose may last less than 10 hours. 10 Although a daily dose of PPI may be adequate in the esophagus, the laryngeal mucosa often requires full 24 hour acid suppression. Twice daily PPI coverage with the patient instructed to take the first PPI dose approximately 30 to 45 minutes before breakfast and the second approximately 30 to 45 minutes before the evening meal, to prevent further injury, allow mucosal healing, and enable patients to obtain maximal symptomatic relief.11, 12. When treating LPR patients, it is helpful to categorize the severity of the patient's reflux into one of three classes, minor, major, or life-threatening. A patients with minor LPR consider their symptoms to be an annoyance but not socially impairing. Patients with major LPR have symptoms that impair their way of life, social or work. Finally, patients with life-threatening LPR have airway obstruction, severe pulmonary disease, or malignancy. Regardless of the clinical severity, all patients are counseled on dietary, low-fat diet, etc., and lifestyle modifications, avoidance of carbonated beverages, alcohol, tobacco, etc. In general, the medical treatment approach to patients with minor LPR is less aggressive. Dietary and lifestyle modifications with twice-daily H2 receptor antagonist therapy or once-daily PPI treatment is a cost-effective starting point that is effective for many patients. In patients whom this therapy fails, twice-daily PPI therapy is initiated. Therapy is maintained for at least six months. If the patient is asymptomatic at that time, RSI 10, and laryngeal inflammation has improved, RFS 5, the medication may be slowly tapered off, often using an H2 receptor antagonist prior to complete discontinuation of anti-reflux medications. Because of the chronic intermittent nature of LPR, the patient is counseled that relapses are common, and many patients ultimately need lifetime treatment. In treating with patients with major LPR, a more aggressive initial medical therapy is implemented beginning with twice-daily PPI treatment. After two months of treatment, if the patient does not have symptomatic improvement, the PPI dose may be doubled or an H2 receptor antagonist may be added in the evening. A recent prospective study has suggested that twice-daily PPI with evening H2 receptor antagonist therapy is no more effective than twice-daily PPI therapy.11 However, this study did not look specifically at patients with significant nocturnal supine acid reflux on pH probe study, and in this group of patients, addition of an evening H2 receptor antagonist seems reasonable. As with the minor LPR patients, if the patient has responded well after six months of therapy the medication may be decreased. If the patient fails to respond, alternative PPIs are often tried and the patient may be pH probe tested while on PPI medications in order to test for drug efficacy.35 If the patient fails multiple twice-daily PPI medications, a fund application may be warranted if the diagnosis of LPR or non-acid reflux is confirmed. Life-threatening LPR requires initial reflux therapy to be even more aggressive. If possible, 
These patients should undergo initial pH probe monitoring to establish the severity of LPR at baseline, and to help individualize treatment. In these patients, initial medical therapy can be as aggressive as 3 to 4 times daily PPI regimen, depending on pH probe study results. In younger patients with life-threatening LPR, fundiplication surgery may be an excellent option, rather than a lifetime of antireflux therapy 36. Figure 11. In older patients, the decision about medical treatment versus fundiplication is based on symptom severity and response to medical therapy, severity of the LPR, existing comorbidities, and patient preference.